Coming up, a new episode of Grandparents and Grandchildren. Lawyer Louis R. Aydala tells his proud Italian story in America to his grandchildren Nicholas Arthur and Juliana Rose. This interview is part of the second season of the TV series Grandparents and Grandchildren in Italian America. No, no. Can you tell me a little about um, where you come from and your background? What life was like? What out your Sicily? Well, I'll tell you. Every individual, I think, needs to be able to identify himself, herself. Who am I? Why do I think the way I do? Why do I eat the food I eat? What What are my values? Where did I get them from? So, I identify myself as a New York City American of Sicilian heritage, who also is Catholic. So I think it's a good conversation, a good question you asked me, because I'll try and give you a little bit of a background as to why we are the way we are, why Giuliana, Sorsanella, and you, Nicola, are the way you are. It uh, starts out in a place that you might know the name. Do you know the name of it, Juliana? Julia. See? And do you know the particular paese? Bronte. Avero. Bronte. See? And do you know where Bronte is located? In Sicily? Yes, but where? There's a certain special thing there. That's on Near the, Mount Etna. It's on the west, west, west slope of Mount Etna. And as a matter of fact, you see, I'll show you. Here's a map of Sicily. And if you were, for example, well, okay, this is, you see here where it's Mount Etna? What does that say over there? Bronte. Right? Okay. So everybody from my family is from Bronte. And you know what it's famous for? It's pistachio nuts. Ah, eh, a paese famoso per noci di pistacchi, vero, ah, vero. Anyone here ever been to Bronte? <laughs> you see here, you go to Villa Bate and then go south, south, you pass Mizzle Mary. You know who lives in Mizzle Mary? Who? Rosalia and, and the other cousins there, right? And you keep going down and look, there's Bolognetta, all right? And if you keep, here's Bolognetta, you keep on the same road going down, Manzuso, and eventually look down here, Le Cara Fride. And interestingly enough, Grammy's paternal grandfather was born in Le Cata Fredi and someone else who you have some knowledge of. His father was born in Le Cata Fredi. Who's your favorite male singer? Frank Sinatra. And Frank Sinatra's father was born in Le Cata Fredi. Now, I'm going to deal with a little reality here because we have to know the good and the bad of everything. For example, in Le Cata Fredi, it was terrible. It self, there was just sulfur mines. In Ucaruz, they would get the, the young kids work in these sulfur mines. It was horrible, terrible. And most of southern Italy was also like that. While we think of Italy as having existed almost forever, it's a younger country than we are. Because it was only like, I think, in 1861 where there was the unification in, in Italy. And so people from the south, really had it bad. I mean, they were looked down upon, quite frankly. And I still think today, to be perfectly honest with you, some of the people up north in Alta Dalia, if they were able to cut Italy, and they'd cut it 
above Rome. They wouldn't even include Rome. And I hope I'm wrong, but maybe I'm right. So the Sicilians in particular were looked down upon. And they were very poor. And you know what they did at the last part, 19th century and the late 1800s and the early 1900s? There was a huge amount of immigration to this country. Why? Picture this, both of you. Let's say today you only speak English and you're going to go to a different country. You don't know people there, right? No airplanes. Put your way back around. No airplanes, all right? And you take your little luggage. And like if you left from Bronte, you go down maybe to Catania. And you take a ship. And maybe it takes you 30 days on the ship, okay? 30 days. You're not taking a shower every day. You're not changing your clothes every day. There are loads of people. People giving birth. Women giving birth. Probably dying on the ship. Women nursing their babies on there. People sick. Throwing up. Seasickness. And you finally arrive in a strange country. And that's what they did. There were no telephones. They're going to call every day. Like you, How many times you speak to your mother and all? You left whoever it was behind. They came here. And our family landed Manhattan, Lower East Side. So, I know you've been talking about the apartment, so where was the apartment exactly? Okay, it's in a place called the Bronx. You know, New York City, it's five boroughs, right? Now, here's what happened. Right where I live, was right by the train. It's the Pelham Bay Line. It goes up from Manhattan, and five cents. Five cents, of course, there. And the stations were beautiful. You have a waiting room, pop belly stove in the winter. It was beautiful. You had machines, penny machines on the platform. You could buy chiclets, you buy a comb, all right? And all pane glass on there. Unfortunately, it's not that way any longer. But because it was so cheap, people could live, move up there, and get a better place to live in. Because where they lived, when they came over, Ubacaus, you know what Ubacaus is? Bathroom. Right, that's not an Italian word. That's an American thing because the bathroom maybe was in the back of the house, the back of the house, or else in the hallway. All right? So now they had an apartment and they just walk halfway down the street, get on the train, go to work in Manhattan, and come back. My whole neighborhood was mainly Italian. But when they came here, it wasn't really going back. And they came here to be American. So other than my, let's say, my, I never saw my grandfathers, my grandmothers who never spoke English, everyone had to learn how to speak English. This was a new country. They're going to live here. So they had to speak English. And unfortunately, they didn't speak, for example, Sicilian to us. They parlo Siciliano quando non voglio io sapere che cosa ha detto. In other words, do you understand what I say? Uh... You said that, like, they kind of forgot their... No. I said they spoke Sicilian when they didn't want me to or anyone else understand oh. what they were saying. We lost out, and unfortunately, although I remedied it from your mother and Uncle Arthur, because I sent them to Italy, and they took lessons, and they lived there. And the Italian men, some Italian men used to come around, and they would play music underneath the windows of the apartment, and people would throw coins out to the Italian men, right? They'd pick up the coins. Also, in the neighborhood, you'd have, for example, the fish, the, the fish, the, the fish with truck. Oh, a fish, a fish, a fish, Going in Italian. Same thing as in Italy. Or the fruit man, he'd come around. Or the ice man, because they had ice, and they would bring the ice up to the apartments or wherever else was needed. So we had the food that we ate, and the way we conducted ourselves was like they were uh, in Italy. The first time when I was in Sicily, I saw people sitting on outside in chairs. And I said, geez, these people are like us in the Bronx. And then I realized, no, I had it reversed. So my father eventually worked for newspapers, okay? He did many things, yeah. You see this, look at this, see? That was him as a young man, as a boxing, see? All right? And sometimes for the amateurs, they would fight a couple of bouts a night. One time, he had his jaw broken, 
you know, he won the fight, but his jaw was broken. So he couldn't go on. And back there, there were different things. See, he's here. he had a dog too. You see the dogs? Look, he had a Boston Bull. See that? That's the Boston Bull. And see, he has a capeto, right? Men used to wear a capeto all the time. Here he is up on the roof. Look at this. See that? And what's he holding in his hand? A hat. A hat, right. And he also worked as a fisherman up in Gloucester, Massachusetts. You see? There's the wheel of the, of the ship. They would get together, all the people. They, just, they had fun together because they enjoyed each other's company. They didn't have all of the things we have today. And here you could see how, what they would do. They would party back then. There's my, my grandfather, my grandmother, and my uncle, my mother, and my father there. My father worked for newspapers, and he was a photographer. The newspaper called the Daily Mirror. Uh, back then there was Daily Mirror, there still is the Daily News. There were many newspapers back then. And you can go out and you buy each of them two cents, two cents each. Wow. <laughs> two cents. Well, the subway used to be five cents when I first grew up. And then he would have a column, you said it, for the Daily Mirror. And he would interview famous people. Now, do you know who this famous person is here? Who's that? That's a monkey. <laughs> That's a chimpanzee. J. Fred Muggs. He was very famous in TV's early days. You know who this is? He was an Italian mayor of the city of New York, Mayor Impelletieri. He was Italian. Also, what your great-great-grandfather did, he was a well-known boxing judge. Back in those days, and those were the healthy on the famous days, bo boxing was the biggest sport, boxing, baseball, all over the newspapers. And he judged some of the most important fights, including what was the most electrifying sporting event in, I'd say, the 20th century. And that was when on March 8th, 1971, Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier fought the heavyweight championship in Madison Square Garden. It was, our, everybody who was important was there. Frank Sinatra was making pictures for Life magazine. Now, when people get married, what kind of happens most often eventually? Um, eventually they will have children. Ah, and look at this. Do you have any idea who this is? No. No? He's three weeks old in this picture. Is that you? Yep. <laughs> What? Why? I look different now. <laughs> look. Very much. Why are you so astounded? Yeah, that's what happens. <laughs> Why? Yeah, that's me. Yeah, as a matter of I always had black eyes when I was young, though. See this? Look at that. That's uh, me, too. I was a little bit over, I guess, a little over a year. Okay? And then, now, you know what Ushimio is? What? Monkey. Yeah. So here he was, Ushimio. I'm gonna show you this picture for a number of reasons. This was taken in the apartment. Can you see the camera? Yeah. Yeah. What's the size of the cameras you use today? It's <laughs> big. Right? Not this even. is what they call the speed graphic. You know who's holding that camera? You? Yep, that's me. And my father is a, a photographer. This is what they had to use. They would have a big case They'd have this camera, see, fl you had flash bulbs. Yeah, right? there's a light bulb on it. Right, and you had to have a holder. You couldn't take pictures, boom, 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 like these people were able to do. No way. So I'd like to know, how'd you meet Grammy? Well, really, Grammy met me. Here's what happened, all right? Three girls from Brooklyn. We're also going to Fordham, but Fordham in the Bronx, there were not women who were able to be together with the men. So the School of Ed in Fordham at that time was at 302 Broadway, downtown Manhattan, near, near City Hall. On Friday night, January 22nd, 1960, Sugar Ray Robinson, who was one of the best boxers in history, fighting Paul Pender for the middleweight championship. And I was going to watch the fight. 
friend, my classmate said, Lou, there's a dance in the gymnasium in Fordham. Let's go. I said, oh, I want to see the fight. But I hadn't been out the weekend before because we had midterms and I had studied. So I went to the gym and I went to the dance. And near the end of the dance, I saw this woman in this tight knit gold dress. And I know she was with two other women, a short one and a tall one. So I went over to the short one and I danced with her. Her name was Vincenza Vidiello. You ever hear her? Enza? Yeah. She still calls up my, Yes. almost every day from Virginia, right? Mm -hmm. Still friend. And I asked her about the middle-sized girl with the gold dress. Then I danced with the other tall one was nice, Laura Aversa. And I asked her about the middle-sized one in the gold dress. And then I danced with the middle-sized one in the gold dress. And I told her all about herself, and she was astounded. How did I know everything about her? Do you know who that was? Grammy. <laughs> and, and, well, then I had to finish college, three years of law school. I had to study for the bar exam. I had to pass the bar exam, and I had to get a job, which I finally did. And then I said, okay, now we can get married. Right? And we got married. Now... What else would you like to know about Grammy? Um, well, where was she from originally? Well, Grammy, parents, they, her mother originally was down the area a little early on Elizabeth Street because what happened to the Italians, like people know about Mulberry Street. Well, the Neapolitans were in Mulberry Street. The Sicilians were like down further where my family was near the Brooklyn Bridge there or on Elizabeth Street where Grammy's mother was and her father was like 12th Street. His father had Mr. Piazza, okay, it was Mr. Piazza, had uh, stables. And Grammy's father, Frank Piazza, to his credit, did something that most people at that time didn't do. What did he do? He went, he wound up going to law school. He would help shovel the manure in the morning, okay? And he would get washed and dry. And sometimes they have to bathe in the bathhouses. These were buildings outside, and you'd go and you'd bathe down there, okay? And he became a lawyer and was with the Corporations Council in New York City. And Grammy, to her credit, because I don't think her other women um, uh, cousins did it, except maybe Aunt Tina, but Grammy went to college, and by virtue of that fact, she was lucky enough to meet your grandfather, no, no, right? You. And had that not happened, we wouldn't be here talking, yeah. right? You wouldn't be my grandparents. But when I grew, was growing up, Uncle Arthur and your mother, I did for them which, which I had hoped uh, had been done for me. And that was to learn more about my culture. Who am I? Where are we from? And the first time well, I went to Bronte, I thought it was like a make-believe place. So you know what happened? No, what happened? Well, when we drove and I saw the sign for the first time, my mouth dropped. It's like, this is for real. This is where, like my mother and other members of the family, maybe I'm stepping in the very same places that they stepped in. And it was good. Have any of you ever been in Sicily? Yes. We Who? Both of us. Well, tell me your what, what, what happened in Sicily that you remember. We were eating good food and we were walking, so everything was perfect. And the fish, the piace fish. That was delicious. Okay, fish is, fish is very good. Now, did anyone ever go to Mount Etna? Yes. Who wants to tell about that? When we were at Mount Etna, we would, we, went and we climbed up the volcano. All the family, all of us, we went and we took a bus there and then we were walking on the rocks and we took many rocks home that we still have and there were lots of ladybugs. And at that time, ladybugs were kind of my favorite like thing. And so I would keep seeing all these ladybugs and I was having a great time. And we were having lots of fun there. And then, as we were leaving, 
like there was a lot of donkeys and they were crazy and so I was hungry after that long like time on the volcano and so I take out an apple and I start eating the apple and then while I'm eating the apple the windows are open because it was car. We were in the hot. Car. Yes, we were in the car and the donkeys come up to the car and start sticking their head in and trying to eat my apple. So I'm scared and I'm yelling all over. And then I'm like, no, no. And um, it was funny, but also kind of scary because they're all over the car, sticking their heads in the windows. Uh, Nicholas, uh, you're in Grammy's house now. And I know you love to cook, but I think you could make the frittata an egg. Omelet yeah. better than Grammy. So tell us how Nicholas makes the frittata. Go. I I um put thyme in it. I put sometimes I'll put Italian spices. I put a little bit of paprika, a little bit of salt, and then I'll put some um, some pieces of bread in it, and then I'll put some olive oil, and then I'll cook, and then I'll do is once it's once what do you it's do with the eggs though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, then I whisk it up and mix it all sure. around. Yeah. Like instead of doing a, a whisk like this, I do like this, because it it kind of gets on on the side of the bowl. Because what, I, what happens is when I put the spices in, the spices get stuck to the side of the bowl, so that kind of put takes the spices and put and mixes it around. And then I take. And then I put it on the um, stove, and once it's cooked... What do you put it in? I usually put it in like, um, also sort of a round dish, and uh, around... Um, I mean, what do you, what utensil do you use to cook with? What do you put the eggs in? Oh, I put so them in they a... they cook. Mm. Yeah, I put them in a pot, and it has like a cover, so it's like, it's, so it's fully covered, like a pan, it has another pan on top of it, like it hooks in. And then once it's cooked halfway, I take it and I flip it over. So the pan is like, it's double, so I flip it over. And then I let it cook like that, and then I take it out. And, and then what do you do? Where do you put it on? I, I put it on a special dish. And what's on the dish? A snowman. And why do you like that special dish? I've had it for a long time since since you were a piccolo bambino, <laughs> Pedro, right? And have you and your sister sung Italian every year? Yeah, so we are affiliated with a Italian school, and that Italian school has that Italian school offers cooking classes. So we made stuffed mush, uh, stuffed peppers. peppers. Yes, yeah, stuffed peppers. Yeah. We've made you know, broccoli. Um, broccoli. Yeah, broccoli. Like, we've made so these like, in the summer. There's like. An Italian like cooking, cooking club, yeah. When they uh, go to Italian school, Christmas they perform in Manhattan. Right. And, Tell and what's the song? Tu scendi dalle stelle. Yeah, and we do. Yeah, we do a lot of traditional Different. Italian songs. They only sing in Italian. Only yeah. sing in no Italian. One. Yeah. And and um, I, as you see, the books that I buy them when I go to Italy, I only buy them Italian books. And we try every day to do something to keep that Italian culture uh, always, always, always. Uh, and I brought up my two biological children, Laura and Arturo. They went to Italy. I think they spoke Italian better than English after a while. And now uh, hopefully they'll do the same thing and go to Italy. Uh, and they're all in different different areas of, uh, of Italy, not just... Uh, not just Sicily. He's been to Rome, he's been to Siena, you know, the top of the boot, the bottom of the boot. Now, who would like to go back to Italy one day to study? <laughs> do you really? And where do you think you'd like to go next time? Uh, probably I like to order Bronte because I personally love pistachio nuts. <laughs> I said, look, you know what this is? You can buy. Oh, it's cranberry juice. Cranberry juice. <laughs> but in Italy, they call it campari. <laughs>